I'm Leslie Canarium, Reader Conversations Librarian at the Rogers Public Library. And this is our March Take It, Make It Adult Craft. This one I like because it's very simple, but it's very adaptable and you can dress it up or down as much as you please. I don't know if you all remember doing uh, macrame back in grade school. That was a long time ago for me, but uh, I tried this project and it was surprisingly fun and very soothing thing to do while listening to an audiobook or watching TV. And there only takes three basic knots, but you can modify it a lot and th those three knots will get you pretty far. Start with this little miniature wooden spoon here. And as I put in the instructions, you can substitute or anything you like. I've seen this same pattern done with a cinnamon stick which might make a nice kind of hostess gift or with just, you know, a pretty stick from your yard or chopsticks or anything you like. But you'll be getting a little wooden spoon. Before you do the macrame, if you feel like decorating it, uh, you can paint it or draw on it. Or I uh, actually, for one, uh, soaked it overnight in strong tea, which gave it a nice kind of brown uh, appearance. Once it's decorated and dry, you'll get eight cords like this. They, they'll come in different colors, uh, but each pack has only one color in it. And you're going to take them one at a time, fold them in half like this. And we're going to do what's called a reverse lark's head knot to get them on the spoon handle, which is a very fancy way of saying, I'm gonna take it like this, flip the loop over the front, grab the ends and pull it tight. And we're gonna do that with each one. Really simple knot to get started. It's the way you start most macrame projects, either with this reverse lark's head or a regular lark's head, which just means that the loop goes in the back instead of the front. All right, get them tight, straighten them out, and you've got 16 cords here you'll see to work with. Eight pairs to make 16. And the next knot we're going to do is a square knot which is exactly what you think it is, like you put in, well, like I put in my shoelaces. We're gonna work in groups of four and just do a row of square knots. The trick is to make them tight, but also keep them flat. If you've got some sort of frame, you can jury rig some sort of frame, you can hang this on to work. I find that's a, sometimes a little easier, but I'm gonna do it flat on this surface so you can see how that looks. So we'll separate at our first set of four. Take the first one, put it over the middle two, and then under the far one. Then you're gonna take that end and put it under the middle two and over the first cord. Pull it nice and tight. You want to keep these middle two from spinning around. And that's half the square knot. To finish it off, you're just going to do the same thing in reverse. over the middle two, under the outside one, then under the middle two, and over and through. Keep these two straight with an extra finger. Be nice if you had three hands, that this would be a lot easier to do. Get it nice and tight. And we're going to do a row of these so that we'll end up with four. So the next set. And there we go, our first row. And gosh, that was so much fun. I think I'll do some more square knots. But for this row, 
I'm going to go in the reverse direction. And the reason we do that is, especially if you're like me, most people are either left-handed or right-handed. And if you keep doing it in the uh, same direction, you can introduce a, a sort of an unconscious angle when we want these to stay nice and flat. And the other thing we're going to do differently is I'm going to take these two outside strings and I'm just going to pull them to the side. So this time there's only going to be three square knots. So once again, over and under and through. You see why it's important to make sure your, your, your cords don't get twisted here because otherwise it'll mess it up when you're doing this decreasing number here. Straighten out all our cords now. And we're going to do that again. Once again, decreasing the cords by two. So we're going to take four, one, two, three, four this time. And we'll end up with just two square knots. one final row, which just uses the middle four chords. And it's just going to be one central knot. There you can see just by using one single knot, the square knot, and decreasing the, the number of chords we used, we got, we've, already we've already started out putting a very nice little triangle shape, a V shape, into our pattern. Just so you know, if you uh, decide to continue on with macrame, you can use that same knot, but do only the first half, so it's not a square, just the, 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 the first half of it. And if you keep repeating that, that will introduce a nice twist into your uh, into your design, so your 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 cords will twist around in a very attractive way. But we're going to emphasize this diagonal shape that we made with a uh, another knot, which is called the diagonal clove hitch, or double half hitch which sounds really dramatic, but it really is incredibly simple. It is exactly what you think of when you think of not, but um, just doing it twice. The trick is that we're gonna take our filler, our guide rope, and since this is a double, a, a diagonal clove hitch, we want to lay it diagonally across the other cords if it was a horizontal clove hitch, we'd do it like this, or a vertical clove hitch, we'd do it like this, but we're gonna do the diagonal, just nicely in line with the shape we've already got. And you take the next cord, and you just tie a knot. And then, carefully so it lines up smoothly with your first knot, you do it again and get it nice and tight. And don't worry, by the way, if you're watching this video in your kit, there will also be a diagram with all these knots so you don't have to be remembering them all. And we're gonna do that again. Go around. We're going to do this seven times with this cord. Sometimes it helps me if I count it out loud. 
and make sure you don't get them tangled and you keep them in order. See how that made a nice diagonal row there? We're just going to do the same thing on the other side, going the other way. So take your outside cord and use it, lay it diagonally up against your design and over and through. Pull it tight and over and through. Okay, as you finish the row going the other way, you'll see that you have now two in the middle and you can make a choice here. You can either leave these open, uh, which will create kind of like a, 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 a keyhole in your design, or you can close it up. I think it's a little prettier closed up, but it's up to you. Generally speaking, you take whichever one is higher and use that as your guide. Close that up. Nicely. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with the square knots. We're just going to decrease it by two and we're going to go in the opposite direction to keep it from getting an unintentional twist. So I take those to the side, use the third one as my guide, and now I'm just going to tie five uh, clove hitches. So there's one. Alrighty, same thing on the other side. Take one, two, three, and we're going to start with the third chord. as our guide chord. And once again, we're going to tie the two middle ones together. This time I'm switching which one I'm using as my filler chord, as you can see. Reversing direction again, and again reducing the, our number of chords by two. We're just going to go and do one more row, this time with three knots. Take away two more. And let's just finish this off by tying these together with a final clove hitch. And that's it for our pattern. To finish it off, your, your thing, you, you're going to want to do something about all these end pieces. So let's just straighten them all out and trim them off. And let's keep that nice diagonal pattern. So I'm going to give it a maybe a couple of inches there. And if you're wondering why I brought a comb with me, well, you just take your fine tooth comb and we're going to comb out these end pieces, unravel them like that. If you don't happen to have a comb, you can also use a toothpick for this part. And you can give those ends a final trim to make a nice fluffy beard. And this is the basic pattern that you've got in your kit. But as I say in the instructions, you can always fancy it up a bit. And I've just brought you an example of some of the things you can do to fancy it up. You can dye the spoon or paint it or decorate it. I put little Pennsylvania Dutch hex symbols on it because I happen to have been reading a book about those. You can add uh, beads to the end. You can use something instead of a spoon. All sorts of different things you can do. But the most important thing you can do is have fun. And next month uh, for April, we're going to be making earrings out of uh, craft paper. So origami earrings, look forward to that. Mm -hmm.